In this video, we are going to transform static elements into rotating ones in order to generate a real wind farm. The processing is quite simple. We will isolate the element, then edit them, selecting the correct vertices and separate the elements in order to rotate part of the object. In this first part, we will select just the correct vertices or the parts of the element that we will separate for the main object. When you are sure that you have selected just the vertices corresponding to the part of the object that you want to separate, you have to push into the menu, mesh, no, not there, push into mesh, not there, there you go, into mesh and separate those. Now you have two objects. The following part is to set the origin of those blades in order to add an empty and rotate that empty at correct speed. So the first part will be select the origin of the objects by selecting the vertices from the connection part. So remember to have the X-rays activated and select all the rounding vertices and now move the 3D cursor to that position. By doing so, the middle part will be established as the origin. Push into object, set origin and set it to 3D cursor. So perfect, now we have rotating blades. Great! Now let's add an empty that will serve as a rotation axis for the blades. Yes, as you can see, it's not there. Not there. Right there. We will make the parenting part. So we will establish the following hierarchy. The tower will be the parent of the empty and the empty will be the parent of the blades. Our wind generator model is a Vestas V150. So knowing that we will calculate our RPM or the blade speed. We can use simple math to do so or check the Vestas webpage but the easiest way, I think, is asking chat GPT. We will assume that the rotor is rotating at a pace of 10 RPM. So if you do the math, as our video lasts 30 seconds, the rotor will be rotated 5 times in that time. Just to be sure, make the transition linear so otherwise the wind generator will be rotating a weird way there you go now let's duplicate the objects um, by changing their names too and changing also the positions to the static ones before rendering two videos that you saw at the beginning we will play a little bit with the rendering conditions otherwise we will take too much time to render this simple scene as you can see in this video we are not using any fancy stuff transparencies or any other special layer so I decide to render using Eevee and it worked perfectly now I think I shouldn't have left the recording at the same time of the rendering, but well, things are like that. I hope you found this video informative and useful. I will continue to improve future videos by incorporating other landscape processing techniques in Blender. I would greatly appreciate your feedback, comments and suggestions for any specific topics you would like me to cover. So thank you for watching. and. See you soon, I hope.